This video shows the restoration of tooth number three with an MO amalgam. Dexter will be used during our procedure. Naturally, we have checked and updated his medical history to make sure there are no contraindications to dental treatment. Anesthesia will be given to allow tooth number three to be treated. The injection site will be dry with a 2x2 two two gauze. Topical anesthetic is now placed at the injection site. The local anesthetic is now administered to the patient. Since we will be working on tooth number three, the posterior and middle superior alveolar nerves will be anesthetized. A full mouth rinse is now performed to remove any taste of the anesthetic. In this procedure, we will place a rubber dam on our patient. After selecting the proper clamp, the clamp is going to be placed on a tooth that is posterior to the one we are working on. With the clamp in place, we'll now place the rubber dam on our patient. Being a great assistant, you're now probably noticing that we're using the rubber dam that you pre-punched before the procedure started. A metal frame will now hold the rubber dam in a stretched out position. The rubber dam material will be stretched to isolate each individual tooth. Here we can see the rubber dam placed on quadrant one. Tooth number three is now isolated and the preparation will begin. The initial tooth preparation will be done with a high speed handpiece. When a maxillary tooth is prepared, the dental assistant must maintain a clear field. You will notice that the dental assistant is using the high evacuation suction as well as the air water syringe. The air water syringe is being used to blow an air water mixture onto the operator's mirror. Once the tooth is prepared, the dental assistant will irrigate the area to remove any debris. The restorative procedure will now continue by placing dical and copolite into the preparation. A small amount of dical is placed on a mixing pad. Using the entire surface of the mixing pad, the dical will be thoroughly mixed. A small amount of dical is now placed on the end of the dical mixing instrument. The instrument is now transferred to the operator for placement. Copolite will now be placed into the preparation. The copolite will be used to seal cut dentinal tubules. The copolite will be transferred to the preparation by using a small applicator. The applicator is now transferred to the operator for placement. Once the copolite is placed into the preparation, a matrix band may be placed around the tooth. Matrix bands are only used in class two preparations. Since we are working on the mesial surface of tooth number three, an MO restoration will be placed. The MO represents a class two restoration. Once the matrix band is placed, a wedge will then be placed. The wedge is placed to help prevent any overhang. The wedge keeps the matrix band in contact with the side of the tooth. With the matrix band and wedge in place, we are now ready to restore the tooth with amalgam. An amalgam capsule is now placed in the amalgamator. The amalgam will be triturated for the proper amount of time. Once it is triturated, the amalgam will be placed into an amalgam well. The amalgam is now placed into the carrier. Make sure you fill the carrier thoroughly before handing it to the operator. The amalgam will be packed into the preparation by using an instrument called a condenser. Once the preparation is filled, the amalgam will now be carved. Various instruments are used during carving. Once the initial carving is done, the wedge and matrix band are removed. Any additional carving is now continued. 
Once the carving is completed, the rubber dam clamp will be removed. Using a pair of rubber dam scissors, the rubber dam is carefully cut between each tooth. The rubber dam and frame are now removed. Each contact will now be flossed. This will help remove any rubber dam material that's still present. The last thing we'll do is check the patient's occlusion. To check the occlusion, we'll use articulating paper. Since Dexter can't occlude on his own, we'll give him a little help. The occlusion is checked to make sure that the patient is not hitting the restoration excessively. Once the occlusion is checked and adjusted if needed, a final polishing will be done. The contact is now flossed to remove any amalgam particles that are still present. At the end of the procedure, a full mouth rinse is done to remove any loose particles that still may be present. Hmm, I don't think this thing's coming out. Hmm, why don't you give it a try?